Hello, this is Mighty Owl. Now imagine you're making a cake, and you've found the best recipe ever. It calls for one and a half cups of flour and one half cup of sugar. You're trying to make sure that you have a bowl large enough for all the ingredients, so you want to figure out how many cups you have when you combine the flour and sugar together. It sounds like we need to use addition, but wait a second, we're going to be adding fractions. Well, that's okay. Just first, when adding or subtracting fractions, you need to make sure the fractions have the same denominator. Remember, when fractions have different denominators, the sizes of the pieces are different. In this example, both of our fractions have a 2 as the denominator. Perfect. But looking at the two halves, if we combine them, we get a whole. And since we already have a whole cup with the flour, we would have a total of two cups. And that means you'll need to find a bowl large enough to fit at least two cups. Uh, not to mention all the other ingredients in the cake you'll need. So far, so good. But you know, there are actually a few ways we can think about adding and subtracting fractions. Let's find out more. So let's keep going. Add the fractions 3 fourths and 2 fourths. Well, having a visual can really help. So we can use a number line for this problem. Now here is the number line and it's divided into four parts since we're working with fourths. We're gonna start at three fourths. And we're adding two fourths, so we can just move two sections over. Boing, boing. We are now at one and one fourth. We added three fourths and two fourths and got a sum of one and one fourth. Good. Let's try another problem. Add the fractions represented by these blocks. Oh, look at this problem. They only gave us pictures. Okay, your task is to add the fractions that these pictures show. Well, it looks like there are 10 parts in each rectangle. And this means we are working with, that's right, tenths. And there are four sections shaded in the first rectangle, so that represents four tenths. And there are two sections represented in the second rectangle, so that's two tenths. Well, Four sections plus two sections would be six sections. So we can color in six sections. And look, when we add four tenths and two tenths, we get six tenths. Fantastic. We're getting pretty good at addition. So let's try some subtraction. Use the rectangles below to subtract two thirds from two. Okay, we need to subtract two thirds from two holes. First, we're gonna to need to separate the holes into thirds, and we can do this by making three equal parts. Excellent. Now we will need to subtract two thirds, and we're gonna do this by taking away or unshading two sections. And we're left with one whole rectangle and one rectangle with only one third shaded. Well, this means that we now have one and one third. So we just found out that when we subtract two thirds from two, we have one and one third left. Have you noticed a pattern yet? The blocks and numbers help us visualize adding or subtracting fractions, but you might have noticed a pattern with the numerators. Let's look at uh, four sevenths plus two sevenths. We could draw out a block, divide it into sevenths and shade four of them. And then we could do the same for the fraction two sevenths. And then we could add all the blocks together. But instead of doing all that, we could just add the four and the two together to get six. Four sevenths plus two sevenths is six sevenths. The denominator will stay the same because we're dealing with the sevenths. So when fractions have the same denominator, we can just look at the numerators and add or subtract those. For example, eight ninths minus three ninths is five ninths because eight take away three is five. Cool. Math is all about finding the patterns and using them. And you just discovered a really important one when it comes to adding and subtracting fractions. Now, let's keep going. Pizza party! Mark has three and one eighths pizzas left over from his soccer party. After giving some pizza to his friend, he has one and four eighths of a pizza left. So how much pizza did Mark give to his friend? Mark started with three and one eighths pizzas and then was left with one and four eighths pizzas. So this means the amount of pizza Mark had decreased after giving some to his friend. So some unknown amount was subtracted. 
Well, we want to figure out how much was subtracted, and we can draw this out to help us. So here we have our three and one eighths pizzas. And let's cross off parts of the pizza until we only have one and four eighths left. Okay, we can cross off this lonely one eighth because it got eaten, and this whole pizza as well because it got eaten. And now we can cross off four of these eighths. And it looks like we crossed off one whole, four eighths here, and oh, don't forget, one eighth here. In other words, we crossed off one and five eighths. Well, there you go. Mark gave away one and five eighths pizzas. Too bad he didn't give them to me. Your local school is doing a plant sale to raise money. One fifth of the plants are tulips, and three fifths of the plants are roses. The rest of the plants are daffodils. What fraction of the plants are daffodils? We're dealing with flowers here. Hey, that means it must be spring. All right, now let's start by creating a box that we can split into five parts. Since one fifth of the plants are tulips, we're going to shade in one part to represent the tulips. And next, we're going to shade in three parts to represent the roses, since three fifths of the plants are roses. And look at that. Four fifths of the rectangle is already shaded. And since there's only one section left, well, that represents the fraction of daffodils. So one fifth of the flowers are daffodils. All right, this is the last practice problem. You're doing great. Let's see about this one. Three fifths plus what is equal to one and two fifths? Well, I think visuals are going to be able to help us out this time. So let's start with the three fifths. Okay, starting with three fifths, how many more do we need to shade in or add to make one whole? Well, that's two more fifths we need to get to a whole. And then we're going to have to add two more fifths to get to one and two fifths. So how many did we add all together? Well, two fifths plus two fifths is four fifths. Look at that, we solved it already. We need to add four fifths. You are rocking it with fractions. You're now able to add and subtract fractions by joining or removing parts of a whole. I can't wait to see what else you're going to rock with the next lesson. See you then.